Good evening and welcome to News Channel 8. I'm Jerome Ajean and here's some of the top stories we have for you tonight. Hurricane season approaches. Are you prepared? Drug Lord eludes capture in Jamaica. We've got your Caribbean report. And the VI Kidney Center does it again. These stories and more are up next on News Channel 8. In our top story tonight, hurricane season is right around the corner, officially starting June 1st. News Channel 8's Wes Small is at Vitima headquarters to make sure you get a start early. Thanks a lot, Jerome. Yeah, the names are pretty much foremost in my mind as I talk to the um, veteran police officers of our day, like uh, Joe Bess and Al Williams and Charles Orange and Mike Freeman, how they said they had to get rowboats into Salt River uh, for David and Frederick. Yes, those names are pretty synonymous, aren't they? Hugo, Lenny, you know what I'm talking about, folks. We're up here um, near Cuesta Verde at the bunker. This is Vitima. And I'm going to talk to the assistant, the deputy director, that is Miss Jacqueline Heiliger. Now we are inside of Vitima with assistant director of Vitima, Miss Jacqueline Heiliger. And let's get right to it, Miss Heiliger. It's that time of year again. I know that you're um, with the National Guard and STEP and with the VIPD. Y'all have emergency plans with the Red Cross and everything. Um, how do we stand as June 1st is right around the corner? Well, let me just say that um, nationally, this is National Hurricane Preparedness Week. So you're right on time in regards to this. Um, uh, the nation, um, Homeland Security, of course, is mentioning that, of course, the entire nation should be prepared, especially those along the coastlines for hurricanes. Um, June 1st, of course, brings us into our, our local hurricane preparedness month, um, where we will definitely have some activities coming out, some PSAs to keep the community informed. And of course, um, to ensure that the community knows exactly what to do in regards to the hurricane season. Um, without a question, I know that the community is as prepared as, prepared as it can be. Uh, we went through the exercises many times over, and it, without, undoubtedly I feel that the community knows exactly what they're supposed to do when it comes to hurricanes. However, as we move from hurricanes, I continue to say that we need to be prepared for earthquakes and tsunamis as well. Mm -hmm. um, we are all hazards emergency management agency and we continue to educate the community in regards to earthquakes and the possibility of tsunami as a result of an earthquake or some other, um, some other reason for that can require uh, a tsunami. Well, you know, Ms. Heiliger, let me stop you there because, you know, with um, tornadoes, um, you don't get much warning. Uh, with tsunamis, you just literally get a few minutes warning. The good thing about this hurricane is, uh, situation is every year we're safer stronger and smarter and I remember when Hugo hit it was like okay we had like maybe three or four days to prepare okay. kind of but now with these uh, satellites and modern technology it's like you really have about 17 days uh, to, to prepare so does that help us because you know when you all look at it we're still a dot a crapshoot if you will in the middle of a big sea kind of scary. But but of course, and this gives us enough time uh, for the director on St. Thomas, myself here on St. Croix, to coordinate with the response agencies so that there they have identified exactly what they need to do. What we're doing at this point is identifying possible shortfalls within the agencies so that they can come to us and of course we can go to FEMA for support or the federal entities for support um, where they may shortfall. If fall short, I'm sorry, here. Well, Y'all already ahead of the game. Uh, and uh, absolutely. And as we get more and more into the hurricane season, you will begin to see more of our federal counterparts um, here within the territory as well. Right. Shelters. Last but not least, we always come down to this, like the complex uh, or any other shelters. Uh, or St. Croix shelters up and running? Will they be ready? The, the shelters, of course, are under the Department of Human Services, and they're the ones responsible for that. Without question, they've been having shelter meetings, um, what I call, what we call um, emergency service function six, um, which is where um, they take responsibility, whether it's for feeding, should the disaster be uh, uh, at, a, at a magnitude where we need to feed the community, um, sheltering, uh, and that's part of their responsibility as well. So without question, uh, the Commissioner Finch, along with his staff, uh, and along with the Red Cross, have identified the areas that, of course, will be sheltering and, uh, and have them up and going. We prepare for the worst and hope for the best. 
We got it. All right, with Assistant Director Ms. Jacqueline Heiliger under Mark Walters, who is the director, please, folks, stay out of harm's way. Do the right thing. Don't wait for the first. Start looking at the ways you could clear the debris from your yard tomorrow morning. Watch the elderly around there, the print handicap, um, the blind, the mute, all, everybody just help each other and have the emergency contingency plans and we'll be okay. Remember, we are safer, we're stronger, and we're much smarter. At Vitima, I'm Wes Small for News Channel 8. Imagine your seven-year-old being left at the bus stop News Channel 8's Wes Small finds out why. Thanks a lot, Jerome. We are in Estate Glen at the bus shanty here, and this is, what's your name, partner? Joelle. Joelle, you're not in school this morning. All right, let me get it from moms. Mom, this is your son, Joelle. How come Joelle's not in school this morning? You guys call Channel 8. Okay, well, I dropped Joelle off at school this morning, at the school bus stop this morning uh, at 7.30, as normal. And um, I got to, I left here to go to work at Innovative in Mumbajoo. I also dropped my daughter off. She catches a complex bus. And uh, shortly after I got into work, I got a call from my daughter stating that, uh, Mom, the bus just left Joelle and the other kids. So I'm like, why? She says she doesn't know. I said, well, they probably are changing buses. So anyway, I told her to go ahead on her bus. She went ahead on her bus, and I got another call from one of the parents stating, Miss Canton, Joel is at the bus stop stranded with the other kids. You need to come and get him. I said, what's going on? She tells me that the bus passed them because they were on the wrong side of the street. So I told her, but they're on that side of the street from all the beginning of the school year, and this is how they've been doing it. The kids, they feel unsafe on this side of the street because they have the bums sleeping under the shanties. And I know they've found uh, drug paraphernalia. The kids have complained about that. Uh, they just feel very unsafe and uncomfortable. Um, so I... So that's why the kids that's, in a group... In a group. Go where? Where do they get they picked They go up? over to the basic grocery oh, store the there, street. right there on the outside, they stand up on the landing out there and they wait for the bus. Every morning I meet all the kids, not only the seven day Adventist school kids, but I also meet the seven, uh, the uh, complex students and the central high students. They're all over on that end. So as a group, these kids do not feel safe being on this side of this, on the street. And I can't blame them because I wouldn't want to stay over here on this side of the street, seeing bums sleeping on the side of the road and stuff like that. I, I wouldn't feel comfortable. What's going to happen tomorrow? I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I'm waiting for a call from the principal at the Seven Days Adventist School. Um, my concern is leaving the kids um, unattended. Anything could happen. Any freak accident, God forbid, anything can happen. And then, you know, what would the... Uh, the uh, bus station say to the parents? What would the school say to the parents? Um, they say that bus is a privilege, a free bus is a privilege. Yes, it is. But you have to take responsibility for the children's welfare um, at that time. Once the parents have left the children at the bus stop, that's the buses, the bus station's responsibility. The children are their responsibility at that time. And they, sh they, they just dropped the ball. They left the kids in harm's way. And this is what I am upset about. This is my concern. They actually left those kids in harm's way. What about the other parents that, didn't just, that, that don't work 10 minutes away? Suppose I had worked at Divi Hotel, or suppose I had worked down at the Fredericksted Hotel. You know, it would have taken me longer to get to Joel. I would have been sweating bricks because I would have been worried. Well, you could have been an essential employee like a police officer or a fire person or something. Exactly. Well, exactly. Right. Well, let's try to get this situation straightened out. Right, Joel? All right, look at your classmates there as we wrap this out, partner. I'm with Miss Canton and her son, Joel. I'm Wes Small for News Channel 8.